Today I'm going to be doing some very, very quick and easy dinner rolls. And here are the ingredients that we need. Three cups of all-purpose flour, one cup of warm water, a quarter cup of vegetable oil, two teaspoons of yeast, one egg, a half a teaspoon of salt, and a quarter cup of granulated white sugar. So those are the ingredients, so let's get started. So we'll get our water in there, and I have my water at 110 degrees Fahrenheit. My sugar, next. I'm gonna get in a cup of my flour. Then I'll get my yeast in there. All of my oil. My egg. And then, I'm going to start mixing this up. I'll add in my second cup of flour. And then all of my salt. So once that's mixed up a little bit, I can take the rest of my flour and just get all of that in there. So that's a total of three cups. And now, from this point, I am just going to start my mixer and I'm going to let it mix and I'm going to let that go for a good six minutes or so. So at this point here, I've been mixing about three minutes or so and you can see it's slowly starting to turn into a dough ball. You always, when making bread, you have to adjust your recipe with the flour. I'm, al I'm already looking at this and I can see that it needs a little bit more flour. So at this point, I will add in a little bit more. I'm gonna use a tablespoon measure, that's 15 milliliters at a time to adjust my recipe. So I'm just gonna let this go for another minute or so before I add in extra flour. Okay, that's about another minute or so and you can see it's very thick, but it's not forming a ball yet. So I'm gonna grab you know, a good tablespoon and just get that in there, and then we'll mix that in. And it's actually a very good thing that you're seeing this happen, because when you are making bread, it really, really depends on how much water. If you're using your measure of water and you're just a little bit over, you know, by a one or two tablespoons, that can really change how much flour you're actually gonna use. So it's a good thing that you're actually seeing this step of the video. So now I'm gonna start mixing this in. You can see that one tablespoon of flour, how it's actually changed that dough. It's starting to form a ball around the dough hook, but it's still not there. So I'm gonna add in another heaping tablespoon of flour and we'll mix that in. And now you can see that it's starting to form that ball. So what happens when you add in additional flour, that flour gets in there and it starts looking like it's forming a ball. I actually call it a false ball because it forms the ball and then it quickly falls apart again and you can see that again here. This is why when you're in the professional kitchen, everything is measured by weight, not by volume, and that way you can have a recipe that works every time. You can do this recipe every single day, and when you have your amounts exactly right, you know exactly how much flour and how much water, how much oil, etc., and the, and the recipe is foolproof. But not everybody has a scale at home, so this is, the, this is why I do my videos you know, by volume. So I've added in a third tablespoon and we will mix that in now. So that's the three tablespoons of flour and you can see really now that it's really starting to form that ball so I'm going to add in yet another tablespoon. So that's only four tablespoons. Now there, I could have done this off camera and not shown you this step but if I do that then you're not really learning anything, so I'm assuming that you're, you know, hopefully learning something. All right, so let's mix this in. So I'm gonna add in probably my last addition. I'll do a nice heaping tablespoon. So that makes tablespoon number, what is that, five? So 
So you can see now that with the addition of the extra flour, that dough ball is really staying together now. And at this point, what you do not want to do is add too much flour because if you do, what will happen is you're going to get a bread that's not very moist and it will not rise as well. You can see here when I'm touching it, my finger is still, it's not getting sticky, which tells me right now that this dough is perfect, just like this. So I'm just going to mix this a little bit more and then we'll pull it out of the bowl. So then we'll get our lovely dough out. Oh, and that dough feels really, really nice. Can you see how nice that dough is? So what I'm going to do now, so what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to spray this with cooking spray. So what I've done is I've sprayed the inside of my bowl with cooking spray. I haven't even cleaned it out because I want to save on bowls. I don't want to wash, you know, too many bowls. So I pop that in there just like that. I'm going to grab my cooking spray and I'll just spray the top of it. If you don't have cooking spray at home, what you can do is take a little bit of water in a bowl and you can just go over the top of it with a silicone brush or a pastry brush or what you can do is you can buy a little sprayer at the dollar store and then just spray it. The oil is really nice because it stays on there and it doesn't dry up. So what this is going to do now is it's going to let, it's going to let the dough really rise up. So I'm going to grab a tea towel and at this point I'm going to stop the video because I want to let this start doubling. You know the yeast inside is going to start growing and it's going to make a beautiful dough. So I want to let this sit for about 45 minutes to an hour. So I'm going to cover this up and we'll come back in about an hour or so. So this is 50 minutes later. Let's remove our tea towel and you'll see our beautiful dough and how much it has risen. I'm going to just simply take my hand now and I'm just going to form a fist and I'm going to push in and you can see how nice that dough is. Really, really nice. I'm just going to pull it all together and then get it out of my bowl. And then we'll start forming our little bread buns. So I'm going to split my dough up and you can make these, you know, any size that you wish in your household. So I've just split mine up into eight. And I'm just going to get all of these into a nice shape. And if you want to be really accurate, what you can do is you can use a scale. And this dough is really, really nice. I hope the camera is picking up how nice this dough is. So what I'm doing here, and you can use whatever technique you're comfortable with, but what I'm doing is I'm just pushing the dough in on itself, and then you can kind of pull it up like this, and then I flip it over, and then I take, as I'm turning it, I'm pushing my fingers, or my, you know, my hands, in like this so that I'm pushing the dough in on itself. Just making it a little bit rounder. So I just pull it up. So I'll finish doing these and I'll be back in a second. Alright, so now that all of my little balls are ready to go, we'll get our tray ready. So I've got my tray ready to go. This is some parchment paper and I just have some metal clips that are holding that paper in place for me. And now we're just going to get all of our beautiful buns on here. Let me turn that so you can see it a little bit better. And so at this point now, I want these to rise. So this is going to be our second rise. I just want to get these all nicely placed. Those look good like that. So now I'm going to let these rise a second time for about 25 minutes. I'm just going to cover these. I'll let them rise a little bit more and then we're going to pop them into the oven. So this is about a half an hour later, and these are ready for the oven. I've got my oven set to 350 degrees Fahrenheit. Now just before they go in, I have made up a little simple egg wash here. This is just an egg with a little bit of water mixed in. And I'm just going to gently cover my beautiful buns here. So the oven is set to 350 degrees Fahrenheit, and I'm going to bake these for about 20 to 25 minutes. I'll just get all of that nice, just like that. 
and these are ready for the oven. So I'll go bake these off and I'll be back in a little while. So here's the final product, my really, really nice dinner rolls. And I actually baked them for a total of 30 minutes. These are rather large. If you make them a little bit smaller, they will do around 20 to 25 minutes, but these are actually very, very large. You can see, you know, they're about the size of a, a really nice hamburger bun. But, oh, they smell so good. So I'll just crack into one. Make sure I'm on camera here. And look at this. Oh, I'll just open it up. Imagine loading this up with butter, butter and jam. Doesn't that look awesome? Really, really nice. You can see how moist and fluffy these are. Beautiful, beautiful. I hope you try this recipe. That's it for today, and I'll see you next time. Oh, those are good. Oh, man, that's good. Oh, really, really good.